All right, thank you very much for coming again. Uh, we are talking about ENT topic today. We were going to record this earlier today. However, you just got an emergency case uh, and we had to cancel and postpone this recording. That case was somewhat interesting and I'm sure that a lot of people have uh, uh, episodes similar to that. So I would like to talk about nosebleed today. So tell me about what happened to the patient. <laughs> oh, so patient actually came in with hypertensive urgency, had pressures in the 200s and he was in the emergency room transferred to the ICU and was started on oral antihypertensives and also on a, I think a cardism drip to get the blood uh, nosebleed to stop because he's been bleeding for several days. Mm -hmm. They managed the blood pressure, but he just kept bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. They placed some packing or rhino rockets in, into the nose to get the bleeding to stop, but he bled through the packing. He bled through the medications that were given. So at the end of the day, what else are you going to do? You're going to have to go to surgery and get everything taken care of so that he can get out of the hospital at some time. <laughs> so that was that was today's very long day. Wow. Unfortunately. You know, I have seen many of those patients usually as a nephrologist because their kidney yeah. got damaged and they need the dialysis or something like that uh, and I have a patient like that in our patient too who actually have a stroke and oh. got paralyzed on the half of the body at age of 30 something because okay. the blood pressure was 220 over 120 or something like that yeah yeah we do see that you know frequently I guess uh, unfortunately people never find out that they had a high blood pressure until too late, right? Um, so what happened? What happened? So essentially, what I had to do was I had to identify the major feeding vest artery into the nose. So I had to cauterize or ligate both of them on, on each side so that the bleeding comes calms down. So this was a, it done in OR with the general anesthesia? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I will say this is a very rare occurrence. Mm -hmm. probably 90-95% of my nosebleed patients I can just manage it in the office yeah I never had a patient who actually had to take an island into the OR to have a surgery <laughs> I have seen many people with the nosebleed with a hypertensive yeah. urgency or emergency yeah. but they usually you know have a nose packing and then gets better right yeah you know but he had nose packing on both sides and he was still bleeding so uh, so that's so that's a kind of rare case and then that is the extreme case mm -hmm. of the worst case of all right but i think everybody have a, at least had an experience of having nosebleed and never had actually had to go to the hospital or to see the doctor so can you tell me what um regular people can do if they have a nosebleed or why do they bleed first of all so number one reason why people bleed is because they pick their nose <laughs> Yeah, that's the yeah. internal medicine exam question too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is the most likely <laughs> etiology of no sleep? <laughs> this is both children and adults. Yeah. You know, like, children won't tell you, but adults, uh -huh. if you ask them about it, at least uh -huh. they'll admit it. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it's because they pick their nose. That's that's the main thing. And a lot of people come in and say it's because um, I have so much stress. I have so much, so many things going on, you know, but then when those things occur, probably you have some blood pressure changes and you're, you're hormonally imbalanced. So I'm sure that can trigger a nosebleed, but primarily it's because you pick your nose or sometimes in children, it's because they stick things up in their nose and parents don't know about it until it starts bleeding and starts getting nasty. So I will say the biggest misnomer with nosebleeds, okay? You have to pinch your nose, right? Mm -hmm. But where are you going to pinch your nose? Everyone pinches their nose up here. Uh -huh. Up here. Uh -huh. Don't pinch up here. Yeah. <laughs> pinch down here. Okay? This is bone. There's nothing to pinch yeah. here. So I tell all my patients, pinch up here. If you're not on aspirin or any other blood thinner, 15 minutes. Don't stop. Step number two, don't raise your chin up. You got to put yeah. your chin down. Everyone puts their chin up and they start swallowing all the blood and then they get nauseated from all the blood in their stomach and they throw up yeah. and then they panic and then they let go of their nose and then it bleeds again. Yeah, it's very common for oh. the teacher to do this, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This doesn't help anyone. <laughs> so, so those are that's the most practical things you can do, right? There are some nasal decongestants that you can buy over the counter. You know, you can soak a cotton ball in the decongestant and stick it up your nose and then hold. That always mm -hmm. helps too. If you want to think about 
prophylaxis or ways to avoid nosebleeds. Uh, saline sprays are always helpful. You can apply ointment or Vaseline to the nose. Mm -hmm. Patients are always surprised when I tell them just use Vaseline. Um, they're like, you can put Vaseline in your nose. I had no idea. So I tell all my patients Vaseline on their fingertip and just on the inside right here, uh, especially before they go to sleep. If they're able to do that, you know, they can maintain moisture in their nose and avoid uh, coming to see me or avoid having to go to the emergency room. So I don't know all the controversy with humidifiers. 구독해 주시고 좋아요 눌러 주시면 감사하겠습니다. Mm -hmm. like whenever I mention humidifier, some people love it, some people hate it. Yeah, I actually was going to have that one episode uh, explaining about humidifier because end up uh, what happened in Korea was uh, they were putting pr um, OxyClean or something, which is basically Clorox yeah. uh, into the humidifier, not washing, but just putting in and then uh -huh. humidifying the air, oh, okay. and which was the, the worst, right? Uh, you yeah. could actually, it become an allergen <laughs> and then and it caused a lung problem. Yeah. So they actually, I, I think uh, somebody died or something and then oh. it became a big problem. There are yeah. some things to kind of remember about nosebleeds though. If you're a teenage boy and you get unilateral nosebleeds uh, persistently, mm -hmm. you, have, you have to be seen um, because young teenage men, they tend to have a growth in the back of their nose, which can cause that. Mm -hmm. So, okay. um, you know, that's, that's, that's the biggest precaution for young men, but you know, for older adults, you know, it, it does happen. And if mm -hmm. it does happen more frequently, you know, there's always that chance that something's growing in your nose. But most of the time, like nine out of 10 times, it's just a small blood vessel in your nose or you picked your nose too hard. Mm -hmm. So if uh, they have a minor bleed um, and they, let's say they have a couple days of a bleed, mm -hmm. um, they can see you in your office, right? Um, or no? well, <laughs> 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 you don't want to see that. <laughs> we no, are going no. to cut it out. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I actually don't mind nosebleed patients, uh -huh. uh, but then I'm, I'm very, I'm very careful in terms of what I offer, right? Uh -huh. Because everyone comes into my office and they're like, "I want laser for my nose." Apparently, if you get laser for the nose, the nosebleed goes away. So uh -huh. the next big misnomer is there's no laser for the nose. We don't, we do not yeah, use lasers yeah. for <laughs> anything in the nose. Okay, yeah. so. Uh, we use, um, in the operating room, there can be uh, electrofrequency coblation, there can be electrocautery, but there is no laser. So you don't do the electric cautery uh, in the office, or do you? No. So usually in the office, um, it's silver nitrate. Mm, okay. Um, so just silver nitrate sticks, but more so than that, it's a matter of identifying. Um, you have to do a nasal endoscopy to identify where, where the bleed is. And then once you identify, you cauterize it. But um, I like to cauterize patients that are actively bleeding in front of me. If they haven't bled in the last week and they come to me wanting something cauterized, I tell them the cautery is going to make you bleed. Yeah. So if you're willing to take that risk and understand that, then sure, I can help. I can I can cauterize it. But that's the risk that you take when um, it's not a very frequent thing. Yeah. Oh, another thing that I find many people do is they pinch their nose correctly and do that but within two minutes they just check and then blow their yeah. nose and yeah. then see what comes out and then they keep bleeding and then yeah. they put the water in it melt all the clot and then keep yeah. bleeding yeah so, so so 15 minutes if you're healthy i say 20 25 minutes if you're on aspirin or anticoagulant yeah. do people really do it for 15 minutes i don't know yeah <laughs> I know I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I haven't seen anybody who do that <laughs> that long. Five, I tell them like, okay, do 15 minutes. And then they're like, three minutes, they are checking already. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's why you tell them 15, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably more than 90% of the time when people bleed, then it goes away without seeing any physician. So correctly pinch your nose, do not put your head back, and then see what happens. And if it continues to bleed, go and see ENT doctor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot we can do in office, in the operating room. Sometimes they're just baseline anatomic issues that needs to be fixed to help mm -hmm. with the nose okay. bleed. So. so next time we will continue to answer some questions from the viewer. And, uh, but also I'd like to talk about uh, nasal spray in one of those next episodes. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Right. Bye bye. bye, -bye.